what it is, what it damn do. Boss here. And I show you the landscape. I show you the landscape because I'm about to embark on a journey that I've been taking rather regularly, about 2.2 miles according to the map that's on my phone. About 2.2 miles. I try to make this voyage every day as a form of uh, cardio and as a form of fitness to try to keep myself in some type of, you know, decent shape, you know. You can be in shape and, 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 and not be a shape, you know. Being round is a shape. I ain't trying to be round. <laughs> I ain't trying to be round right now, you know. It's too hot for that. So I'm going to take this voyage, 2.2 miles, 2.2 miles, go on down there and come back. Uh, and then once I've earned the right or earned what I call earned, I've earned a weightlifting session. I have performed the proper cardio, then I have earned the opportunity to lift a little bit of weight. Not a lot of weight. Not a lot of weight. We're trying to decrease in weight so it's not so much as heavy weight. It's just like high repetition, lighter weight, you know what I'm saying, to kind of tone and show the progress of what your fitness is doing for you and your cardio is doing for you. you, know? it, gives you it, gives, it gives you a, a more chiseled, a more defined look. You know what I'm saying? So that's the voyage that I'm about to go on. But I thought, you know, I had something on my mind. And you know, I share with you people. I share with you people a little too much, but that's all right. Based off of the verbiage of O ye of little faith. Damn it. You know? <laughs> Biblically, it is spoken O ye of little faith because, you know, so many times in life, we've seen things go the way they go. We've seen things turn out the way they turn out. It's never proven to be wrong. It always pans out the same way. So why would we think any differently? Well, feller, ma'am, that is, that is exactly it. If you don't have God involved and you haven't put God in front of your endeavors and made him the head of your life, why should you expect any different? Why should you expect any more? You can't change the world in its entirety. That's not your job. That's not your place. I don't care what position they gave you. I don't care what promotion they gave you. I don't care what you've been elected to do. I don't care what you've been signed up to do. God makes choices for all of us. And it is abroad and it is across this entire globe. This little blue bubble that we all sit and spinning on, you ain't got the control that over that that you think you do. And I don't care who you are. You can be the 4-5, the 4-4, four four, the 4-3, four the 4-2, four the 4-1. Four no president and no position created by man is going to globally do anything to affect what God intends for us. You understand that? You better understand that. You should get out of your feelings about being emotional and crying about votes and concerning yourself about political offices and things of that sort. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, fella. It just don't go that way. And I'm glad it don't go that way because man is so flawed and influenced by things that don't matter. Would you really want them to be a part of what makes your life and your livelihood any better or worse? I mean, think about it. Think about it. You, you're a Democrat. You, you're a Republican. You, you're this. But don't you still have things that you complain about aren't, that aren't right and things that still should be changed and things that should still be different? And you're coming and goings and your ones and twos every day. Of course they are. Now, why is it the person that you vote for? Or why is it the person that you elected? Or the person that you deem worthy? Not making your life perfect. Well, I tell you, fella. Because they don't have that. The true joy of life is not in the man's hands. It never was. It never will be. It never should be. You understand that? And I'm telling you. I'm saying... You don't even know what I'm saying. I'm going to tell you what I'm saying. True joy. True joy? Dude, you can do that. You can do that yourself. I'm telling you. Don't fall down too hard on your knees to pray for things that are in your capability. Things that you could change. You pray for things that you don't even realize you've been given. You're still waiting for them to come floating by or drop out of the sky or land in your lap while you're sitting there crying with your crybaby ass. It ain't going to work like that. 
This shouldn't work like that. I hope it don't ever work for you like that. Because that shouldn't be the example that other people go by or see when they see you. They should see everything that you're blessed with came from you giving hard work, putting the work in, staying loyal, staying devoted, and giving God the praise. And then those things came about. And that's the only testimony that you should be giving. You know what I don't need to see? Let me tell you what I don't need to see. Don't come cruising up to me in your new car. You didn't have a car. It took you two years to get your credit halfway decent the way you could get a car. You got a halfway decent score. You got an APR out the roof of this new car. The insurance on, on top of the payment, you're paying who knows, damn near $1,000 a month, but it's the car that you wanted, and you got it. And you come cruising up, yeah, man, I see that you got your car. Yeah, man, I got it. I know you're glad. Yeah, man, if it wasn't for First Federal, First Federal didn't do nothing for you in your shitty credit. God blessed you with the opportunity to do better for yourself. And being that that's your first car, it's, it's going to have the worst, worst implications because it took you so long to get yourself together. Now, through this car, your next car will be a better deal and a better arrangement. You have better stipulations the next car you get. But you didn't get that because the bank thought you was a good guy. You're not a good guy. And at your age, you should have better credit. But since you took so long to get there, you're going to go through the worst first. And if you don't see that, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Hey, girl, I see you and uh, look, the Tyrone got back together. Yeah, it took a long time, and he kept going to the doggone uh, brothel in the whole house, but he decided to stop doing that. And me, I stopped tell, turning $2 tricks, and I gave all that up. And here he is back together again, walking hand in hand, and we happy as we ever been. Well, I'm so glad to hear that, girl. I'm telling you. How you attribute that? You know, what do you attribute that to? Well, we watched about four or five episodes of Oprah, and Ayala changed my life, fixed my life, and that got us all the way back to where we need to be. You're a stupid son of a bitch if you believe that, because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if God didn't see worthy for you two retards, you two retards to be together, you wouldn't be together. You'd have got... Stabbed in that whole, house, or that whole house and you'd have got ran over by the car running to go do your next $2 trick. If he felt the need to have y'all together, that was the only opportunity and chance you was going to get. Now, if you want to attribute it to someone on TV or attribute it to somebody you would never meet, attribute it to somebody you think talking about you but ain't talking about you, just talking about a similar situation that you're in, and you don't believe that God had anything to do with it, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't. Hey, sister, how you doing? I see you just started work. Yeah, I just started work. You know, even though I got them four felonies and them two DUIs and I still got the blowing the little thing in my car every time I use it. And, uh, you know, I, I can't drink Listerine because it'll get me drunk. So I just use salt water because I'm too close to being a drunk, drunky alcoholic. But, yeah, I got this job over here and it's, it's a good job and it paid bills, got good benefits and all that. Well, what do you attribute all that to, girl? All that stuff you done went through to have this job. Well, Resume Builder and Monster.com is the one. You's a dumbass is what you is. Because if you believe that you just had people that just couldn't find your background check and couldn't realize how much of a drunk, retarded person you is, and they just overlooked all that to get you a job, and you ain't going to attribute that to God, you just are just lost. You're lost in the sauce and you ain't going to be found. And somebody need to hit you in the head with a bag of nickel. It ain't nothing that anybody can do for you that God don't see fit and worthy for you to have. And if you didn't think to do it by prayer, you ain't going to get it no other way. Not genuinely you ain't. God makes it all possible. Oh, ye of little faith. The impossible is made possible because God and his grace see fit for you to have that. And you might have went through the worst of it all. But it's always darkest before dawn. When it's closest to seem like nothing's going to happen. That's when you should have the most faith. That's when you should put your best foot forward and make your next move your best move and make that move towards God. Take one step toward him, you take two towards you. And that might be all you need. He can change your life. Nobody else can. Here's the, here's the landscape. 